From Ken Shamrock pretending not to know Hoist Gracie, to the brutal feud between Matt Hughes and Matt Sarah, here are some of the top few beefs that mixed martial arts fighters have. He's such a coward and I can't relate with those people. So, uh, not that if you do that with girls you're a coward, but Ben in particular, he's just a coward, he's a fraud. And I'm excited I get to be the one that the universe chose to expose him them all. Starting off with Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock. This one was one of the first few beefs in MMA. I remember when I tuned in to watch the first UFC event and the way Hoist Gracie handily defeated Shamrock. It was wild from start to finish. Ken claimed not to know who Gracie was, which ended up being his downfall. He got knocked out pretty early in the fight after he went on a roll with Hoist. And fans were super excited as the duo went into their second fight fight, which was called the Super Fight. There was a lot of buzz around it. Unfortunately, though, all that fizzled in every way possible, because Shamrock knocked Hoist down almost instantly and lay on his guard the whole time. It finally ended up being declared a draw. And Ken Shamrock fight to a draw, although both raised their hands you know, people in are a sign of victory. You know, they never understand the subtlety, the heart of a warrior. At that time, UFC rules did not allow for standing up a stalled fight, and the first real beef ended with Hoist winning 1-0-1 against Shamrock. But Gracie isn't the only MMA fighter that Ken's had beef with. He also really hates his brother, Frank Shamrock. The story of Ken and Frank talks about how two troubled young boys were adopted by a fighter. They became foster brothers and later turned out to be bitter rivals. The history of the two brothers is definitely part of MMA history. They used to be pretty close, but had a fallout when the two brothers decided to part ways at the Lion's Den School of Fighters. Both were pretty good at their games, so it must have been hard for either of the Shamrock brothers to back off. Frank was forced to leave the place, and thus began the history of the bad blood between the two of them. Their rivalry went on for a very, very long time. Ken's a better man, sure, but I'd pick Frank over him any day. He's just a better fighter. Speaking of, here's another one. Matt Sarah versus Matt Hughes. The feud between the two started when Hughes was in his dominant era at welterweight, and Sarah had just won the Ultimate Fighter Season 4 around 2007. Once Matt Sarah beat St. Pierre to win his title, he began calling Hughes out, saying that he was disrespectful and bad for MMA. Matt Hughes took his revenge when he got some airtime on the Ultimate Fighter Season 6, where the two were rival coaches. The beef gained steam during that show, and it was clear the only way to resolve it would be with a fight. The two had a face-off in 2009, and Matt Hughes was declared victorious by a close decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 29-28, declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Matt Hughes! Well, I think the fight could have gone either way, and Hughes just got lucky. Either way, it squashed the rivalry between them for the time being. One rivalry that couldn't be squashed, however, was Dana White versus the Crazy Russians. The president of UFC has always run the promotion with one mission statement, give the fans the fights they want to see. This has led him to shady dealings with management groups and people who come in with their own agendas. Dana White and the UFC have been in an incredibly long feud with Fedor Emelianenko, his manager, and his team. Dana practically hates them. He even dubbed them the Crazy Russians. His words, not mine. For almost a decade, Fedor was said to be the best fighter in the world. Fans wanted to see him fight against the best fighters in the UFC's heavyweight division, and so Dana tried to negotiate with the Russians. But it turned out to be a pretty frustrating and maddening affair. No, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't dislike Fedor or anything like that. Um, but no, it didn't happen, you know, just... We, we gave it a shot. We can't say we didn't try. We gave it a shot, and it is what it is. The public back and forth between the two parties was pretty ugly, if I'm being honest. They never ended up reaching an agreement, so a deal was never made, and Fedor fans were left wondering, what if? He kind of fell out not long after, though, and lost three fights in a row, and is no longer the fan favorite of many MMA fans. Looking back, there's no clear winner in this battle, but it's pretty obvious that Fedor and his fans were the losers. Another UFC rivalry worth talking about is the one shared between Tim Sylvia and Andre Arlovsky. This beef was 
born when the two met for the first time in the cage at UFC 51. Andrew knocked out an unbeatable Sylvia with a first round submission and took his heavyweight title. Thus began their bitter rivalry. The two had another face off the following year at UFC 59. This time, Tim gained the upper hand and knocked out Andre almost instantly in the first round. Feeling like he still had something to prove, Tim challenged Andre to the rubber match. He won that match with a lopsided decision that stamped his place in the UFC as the best heavyweight fighter. Their beef didn't stop there, though. The two began another feud years later, this time on a personal level. Tim began going out with Andre's ex-girlfriend, which must have stung. But the bitterness just reminds me of another rivalry that didn't go too well. Don Fry and Ken Shamrock. I know what you're thinking. This Shamrock guy's just about everywhere. And that's true. I guess he just thought he had something to prove. I mean, his own brother was a better MMA fighter than him. Anyway, this feud is different, I promise. Along with being involved in the very fight beef in the UFC, Ken also also began the crossover of MMA and wrestling fans by beefing with Don Fry. Don made some pretty harsh comments about Ken's personal life, which were both funny and painful. He also said that if and when they met, Shamrock's dad would corner him instead of his own son. Their rivalry was pretty brutal and generated an insane amount of hype for their fight, which took place at Price 19 in Japan. If you guys haven't seen that fight, let me sum it up in three words. It was epic. Both fighters threw some pretty heavy strikes against one another. Fry landed and did most of the damage with his feet. Ken brought out his arsenal of kicks and ankle locks, which ripped apart Fry's defense. The latter fighter later admitted that he wasn't the same after the fight. The duo gave their all in that battle. A huge number of people watched that fight, and they were not disappointed. This was an all-out, no-holds-barred war, and both men showed mutual respect for one another after it. I'm glad Ken had a happy ending with at least one fighter, because there's no happy ending with these two, Frank Trigg and Matt Hughes. Hughes was a pretty dominant welterweight champion from 2001 to 2006. At that time, he had beef with two fighters, BJ Penn and Frank Trigg. While BJ was a bit of a silent opponent, Frank was a loudmouth that started the Hughes-Trigg feud. He started this conflict by triumphing over Matt's brother in a local wrestling match and bragging about it. Hughes was not amused by Frank's outburst. It got under his skin, and a fight was soon on its way. Matt pretty much defeated Frank in the first fight with a rear naked choke in the first round. Their second fight was one of the most memorable in UFC history. Frank landed an illegal blow that the referee pretty much ignored. He jumped on Matt's back and slapped him in the same hold that he'd knocked him out in the first fight. It looked like it was going to be an ironic end to the fight, but then Matt broke the hold and picked Frank up. He carried him all the way across the cage before slamming him down brutally. Did before. He's got And that's how he won again. That's all for the most ridiculous beefs between fighters of all time.